Welcome to SBA Experience. On this video, we're going to be covering the requirements to qualify for an SBA loan. Without further ado, let's get right to it. Here we are at the SBA Experience website. All right, we're going to go ahead and scroll down to the qualifying requirements. What do you need to get approved? So the number one requirement is going to be credit. SBA loans are personally guaranteed and anyone that is 20% or more owner of the business must be a guarantor. This means your personal credit must be clean without any bankruptcy collections or late payments in the past seven years. Some lenders look more closely at the most recent three to four years and may require a detailed explanation in writing. Um, if your business is at least two years old, and the loan amount is $350,000 or less, the SBA is also looking at your business credit score on any SBA loan. Uh, and that's called the FICO Small Business Scoring Service or the SBSS score. Um, this ties into your business credit. If, you're, if your personal credit is strong enough, you'll, you might be able to slide through, but if your credit, personal credit is even good but not excellent, it might require that you build uh, business credit uh, to be able to lift up your SBSS score to qualify. So one of the things we're definitely going to be doing if you're uh, applying for a smaller loan is making sure that your business credit score meets the criteria. All right. Um, if you are applying for a bigger loan, uh, then we still want to look at that. But as long as your personal credit is strong enough, then you should be okay. So that's your credit requirement. Um, now here we have a, a tool that you could verify your credit without putting an inquiry on your credit, which um, you just click this button and you can set up an account for a dollar for a free trial to verify your credit. And you'll see a FICO 8 3 Bureau credit score. Um, if you want to uh, be able to look at your business credit, make sure you go ahead and schedule a free consultation and we'll walk you through that process. The next requirement is going to be your ability to service the debt. Now, if you're a startup, then the bank is going to be looking at your global debt service coverage ratio, meaning they're going to be looking at your personal income. They're going to be looking at your liquidity, your cash flow, and your personal financials. If you're an existing business, um, then they're going to be looking at your business tax returns. They're going to be looking to make sure that your business is able to debt service coverage the, um, the loan, all right? So debt service coverage ratio tells the bank if you can afford to pay the minimum monthly payments on the loan amount that you're applying for. Uh, the debt service coverage ratio is calculated by dividing a business's net operated income by their total debt service. This is done by using data from the three from the last three years of your personal financial records for startups plus up to three years of your business financial records for established businesses. For business acquisition, three years of the businesses that you're buying from the seller, they have the three years of the business financials will be required from the seller. Based on these variables, banks and lenders calculate a debt service coverage ratio. This ratio determines your ability to repay the debt. The government, the SBA, requires that you have a minimum DSCR of 1.15 times on the ratio. But most banks want to see between 1.25 times. Without the required debt service coverage ratio, banks will look to your projections to see if you can qualify. Um, we have uh, created a, a calculator here to calculate your debt service coverage ratio. And um, it's going to tell you also what you can anticipate on your monthly loan payment. The one thing this calculator is not showing you is going to be the closing cost, which you can factor in at around 4%, but it could be a little more or less depending on the bank you're working with. Um, and so this is uh, an example here at the current prime plus 3%. That's going to be a total of 11%. Uh, with a 10-year term on a $4 million loan, 
the loan payment. Again, this is not taken into consideration uh, the closing fees, which could be an additional 4%, give or take. The monthly payment will be 55100 So to find out if we are going to be able to debt service this loan, we put our net operating income here. Uh, so let's say, for example, your existing business is doing uh, net operating income on your tax returns is $1.5 million, right? So then your debt service coverage ratio would be 2.27, which means that you could service a $4 million loan, right? But if your net operating income was, let's just say, a million, then you're still in line. You're still able to service the debt. However, let's go down to, let's say, 800,000. Uh, and um, and now we're at 1.21. So the government says it should be 1.15. That's the requirement from the government. But most banks want to see it at um, at least 1.25. So at least 1.15, you can get your foot in the door and maybe through your projections, you can make up the difference with strong assumptions, which we're going to, which are going to get into. Um, now there are other variables that can um, affect and adjust the debt service coverage ratio, especially on an acquisition. There's something called addbacks um, and addbacks are where basically the seller, maybe they're overpaying themselves or there are, um, items on their expense sheet that are unnecessary, which then the bank can consider, okay, we're going to go ahead and add that back to reduce um, the overall expenses, which will increase your debt service coverage ratio. Now, that is something that, of course, on a case by case, the bank you're working with is going to itemize. Uh, so, you know, do keep that in mind on a business acquisition. All right, the next requirement is going to be a business plan. This is probably one of the most important things uh, the bank is going to be looking at is your business plan. Uh, without a good business plan, uh, the bank really does not, cannot determine or cannot approve you, okay? Because the business plan has some very key components. It's not just telling the bank about your market and your competitors and you know, letting the bank know that you've done your diligence about your industry and about, um, you know, how you're going to be successful. But the business plan is going to have three key components. Number one, it's going to have your use of funds. The use of funds in an SBA loan have to be very detailed and broken down. If you're looking for working capital, you can't just say working capital. You have to take the time to break down what that means. What is that working capital? How are you going to use it? The more clear and the more specific and detailed you are in your use of funds, is the more likely the bank's going to feel comfortable with the loan that you're requesting. But not only is it your use of funds, but it's also your projections. Banks typically want to see two to three years projections. And what make your projections solid is going to be assumptions. Your assumptions tell the story of how you got to the numbers in your projections. So don't just come up with numbers and if the if the underwriting department asks, well, how did you come up with these numbers on your projections? You know, you can't just pull them out of thin air. Your assumptions tell the story. It, it, re it relates and refers back to your tax returns. It refers back to your profit and loss statement. It refers back to your marketing plan, to your use of funds, to all the details of how you're going to cut back and save money and how you're going to invest the money to grow the money, your expected profit, um, you know, all of the all of the little nitty gritty details that make up your projections are going to be laid out in your assumptions. And that is what is going to seal the deal. That's what's going to make the bank feel very comfortable that your use of funds makes sense because your projections are strong and your assumptions are legitimate. So this is very important that you take the time to do this right. Now, it's obviously for most of us, we haven't really ever done this before. So I found a software. Uh, if you click this link here, it'll take you to the software. Um, it's only $15 a month that will help you to create and build a business plan. 
Step by step, it's going to ask you all the right questions. They have an SBA friendly version and it includes the projections. So this software will help you to create your business plan, including the projections, and then you need to create your assumptions in your business plan. Uh, you can also schedule a consultation and we can provide you with some examples of SBA um, friendly um, templates. Um, if you if you rather just look on and work off of a template versus using the software. However, the software is great and it will do the job if if you take your time and you focus on really itemizing your use of funds, your projections and your assumptions. All right. That's your business plan. Next is the projections, which I kind of went into detail on the uh, business plan section. Um, again, it is important to provide realistic and well-supported projections to the lender to demonstrate that your business has a viable plan for growth and repayment of the loan. Your projections must demonstrate that the business will be able to debt service coverage ratio the loan. So this is where perhaps if you meet the government requirements of 1.15, on the debt, debt service coverage ratio uh, based on your uh, tax returns, your projections, if they're strong and the assumptions are really good, um, can, can project that you will be able to debt service coverage ratio the loan and the, the lender may still approve you based on the strength of your projections. So this is again, very important. Um, it's equally important to, to your projections that uh, are your assumptions. Assumptions explain how you arrive at the numbers in your projections, they should be matched to your tax returns. When applying for an SBA 7A loan, you typically um, be required to provide several types of projections to help the lender assess the financial viability of your business. Uh, these projections may include profit and loss, cash flow, balance sheet, as well as sales projections. All right, and you can learn more about projections by clicking more on projections there. Uh, the next requirement for an SBA loan is gonna be collateral. Again, if it's a 504 loan, there is no collateral, but for a 7A loan, you can expect that most banks are gonna be looking for collateral. Most SBA banks want the loan to be fully collateralized with real estate equity. Uh, this is not the case every time and in every situation. On loans above 350,000, the SBA the government requires that the bank uh, collateralized the real estate equity, even if the bank doesn't require it. So that means that even if the bank doesn't require it for the loan, if you have equity in real estate that you own, then the bank is required to take that equity. And that means that there may be a second, third, fourth, or fifth lien. It doesn't matter. They're just going to put a lien on the asset. Um, as long as it's there, they are required to do it. Um, the SBA requires that collateral it is discounted. That means you don't get 100% credit for your equity. The, dis the discount varies based on the type of collateral. For example, real estate is 85%, while inventory is only 10%. One uh, very, uh, you know, really cool or um, unknown uh, fact about SBA is that you can bring a third-party collateral guarantor to the loan. The SBA and the bank or lenders will allow you to bring a third-party collateral contributor to the loan. That person does not have to be added as an officer or a member to your company, and they will not be personally responsible or guaranteeing the loan. They will simply allow you to use their property as collateral, and the bank will place a lien on the property as collateral for the loan. Obviously, not many people would do this for another person, but if you have a family member or a very close friend or an associate, associate that owns residential or commercial real estate with equity and they're willing to help you to secure your loan, you can bring them and their property or equity to the table to secure the loan. If you have questions about that, definitely uh, schedule a call. Um, so that's collateral. Uh, and the next uh, requirement is your cash on hand, liquidity. This is also equally important as all of the other requirements. Um, your cash on hand is the amount of money you need for a down payment on an SBA 7A loan, and it can vary depending on several factors, including the size of the loan and the purpose of the loan. 
Typically, SBA lenders require a down payment of at least 10% of the total project cost for most 7A loans. For example, if you're applying for a $100,000 7A loan, you'll need to provide a down payment of at least $10,000. However, some lenders may require a higher down payment depending on their individual lending criteria. You'll, you'll typically see that uh, increase if you are a pure startup mom and pop business, not an not an acquisition or a franchise. But if you're you're starting something brand new, then um, they're usually going to want to see that maybe you're going to put twenty or even thirty percent um, into the loan. It is at their discretion, but you sh you should at least anticipate ten percent. Now the SBA also requires what's called post closing liquidity to be able to cover at least six months of payments and business expenses. This is an SBA, this is a government requirement. Um, the, the bank may require more. They may ask or wanna see 12 months of, of post-closing liquidity, liquidity, but the government requires at least six months of post-closing liquidity um, to, to qualify. Um, the lender may choose to require more than that. Also, uh, some lenders look only at the business while others will look at both your personal expenses as well, again, especially for startups. Um, what's access acceptable for uh, post-closing liquid liquidity um, is going to be, uh, you know, funds that you already have. They typically want to see some funds that have seasoned in your bank account for at least three months. They may look back further, and if they see larger transfers. They may ask you to verify where the money's coming from. Funds cannot be borrowed. Um, even from friends or family, they will have to sign an SBA form that confirms that the money is a gift. Okay, funds can come from investment portfolios and retirement plans like a 401k, but, they, but that can be very expensive unless accessed properly. Uh, there is one way to leverage a 401k IRA or TSP plan, and it's called a self-directed rollover program. There are several companies that provide this service, and we can introduce you to all of them to make sure you find the right fit. And the reason the SBA is okay with you doing this self-directed uh, 401k or IRA or TSP rollover is because it's not considered debt. You're not borrowing money. You're simply roll over, you're rolling over your 401k into a new policy and you're self-directing it, um, the funds in the policy towards your own company, purchasing your own shares. Uh, there is a cost to set this up, but it is not debt. And so therefore it is acceptable by most banks as a bridge if you need additional liquidity uh, for cash on hand for your loan. All right, and again, uh, we can help you to uh, research and to find the right lender for for that all right the next um, product or the next requirement is going to be your insurance requirements um, when applying for an SBA 7a loan you're, you're going to be required to meet certain insurance requirements to protect the lenders investment and minimize risk the specific insurance requirements will depend on the lender's policies and the nature of your business, but some common types of insurance include property insurance, liability insurance, workers' compensation insurance, and business interruption insurance. Uh, life insurance is also required by the SBA to bridge the gap on loans over 350000 that a borrower is unable to fully secure. Banks may require it on any loan size as well. Um, I have seen banks where even though the, the lender fully collateralized the loan, require that the, the client take out a uh, loan, uh, I'm sorry, a, a life insurance policy and assign the bank to the loan. And basically what that does is in the event of the uh, borrower's death, the insurance policy uh, pays off the loan. All right. so. Um, if you go here and click insurance options, uh, we do uh, show you different insurance options that you can uh, tap into through next insurance. And so these are the main requirements that you need to be prepared for that we're going to be helping you to, uh, to prepare 
uh, with especially knowing your numbers and uh, getting the details ready for your business plan. Um, so please schedule a free consultation and through that consultation, I will be able to, or one of our team members and agents will be able to assist you in preparing for your loan so that you can qualify for your SBA 7A loan. Thank you for watching. Make it a great day.